you know, we were talking about artificial attractants today, and we are talking about scent and clothing and rattling and everything. One of my favorite all times is a deer grunt call, especially in this pre-rut and, and during the rut times. Uh, a doe will stay in estrus for about 24 hours, and then when she's out, that buck's up and on the move. Now, he's not afraid of going in and stealing another man's girlfriend, so a grunt call can be a great for you, especially in the early mornings. Uh, I like it about five minutes before you can really see uh, to allow another deer time to cover some distance. Uh, I like it during the middle of the morning. I like it in the middle of the afternoon, and I like it in the evening. Uh, you know, each one's a little different. You know, there's breeding grunts. There's grunts from a buck just trailing a doe. Uh, the snort wheeze. Uh, we're going to go into the, the fawn bleat and doe bleat and things like that. But one of the great things about the uh, grunt call is nowadays you can get a, what they call a buck roar or a roar with them. And that buck's real guttural. When That's when he's really on that doe. And, you gotta imagine he's been chasing her for 12 hours. It's a and he's really running and, and he's deep in his throat. One of the great things about the grunt call is, is you can start, start real soft and act real excited and then put the call down and listen for five or 10 minutes like turkey hunting. just put the call down. A lot of times you can hear in the oak leaves or in some of these back timber areas, you can hear that deer. And he'll stop. Now, one thing about the grunt call, he's looking for that grunt call. So if you can kind of sense he's coming, the great thing is you can turn around the other way. Makes it just like a turkey call. Sounds like he's getting farther away. Then he may come. He may charge right by you. And, and it happens, they'll go right on by you. This is probably six or eight of the biggest bucks I've ever killed. I killed them with a grunt call and never saw them ahead of time, except for just taking my chances of that call, wait 15 minutes, call, wait 10 minutes, call, wait 10 minutes, and just stay an advocate about it. Now also, same type deal like you talked about with the rattling horns. Another good use of it is a buck's walking, he's, he, maybe he's lost, he got whipped off, or whatever, and you see him moving, get his attention, he stops, he looks, don't call while they're looking at you. A lot of times when they're looking at you, uh, he can just pinpoint right to where you're at. And he'll show you that by, if he knows right where you thought you were, you never blow out, he'll walk right to you. Um, you know, the snort wheeze is, is when you have to actually see them do it, but when they actually get all blown up and bulk up and all their hair stands on the end, almost like the, the two neighborhood cats are getting ready to spar. Uh, the dog's hair raises, but not like a deer. Deer raises every hair on him like a cat does. And he'll create this. And, that's, you know, inhale and snort wheeze through his mouth and nose. And, and I don't know how we came across this later in life. I, I never heard him until we started talking about the snort wheeze. And then after we started talking about snort wheeze, I actually seen several bucks do it. But it's not always a big buck, too. I mean, a couple younger bucks will do it, too. But that's enough to let another buck come on over and challenge. And they're all about the neighborhood challenge. Late season or into the rut, a lot of times... Uh, you don't always hear it, but by hunting a lot of agricultural fields, I get to watching the deer and as they're moving and playing. And the fawns will always have a little bit of a bleat. And each time that they get away from their mother, they bleat back to their mother. And the same as goes along with the coincide with the mating season is when a doe or fawn is in heat, she'll bleat a lot more, become a lot more vocal. Now, I mean not vocal like continuously talking, but she will continue to, to relate to other deer that, you know, she is an estrus and she's ready. And so they'll give a big, long bleat. And it's long. There's several different calls, blow calls, the cans. This is a long can. I happen to like this, the short can. It gives just a little bit of a, a chirp to it. Um, but I think that deer's got to hear that tr sound travel. So if you can, uh, 
Plus you keep this right here in your shirt, right in your coat pocket, right down here. I keep it zipped in here so it doesn't do this, you know, as you walk in. Um, you know, it's, you know, the doe bleat calls on the fawn bleats. Uh, each one of them differently. Uh, early archers, I mean, a lot of times you can, you can fawn bleat and just a little nee. Yeah, that doe come right around there and check. She may not be her fawn she's checking on, but she'll come check on another fawn. That may allow you the opportunity to harvest a doe.